oh my goodness i applied to over 300 places when i say support system hmm mudu also says this thing when you're doing an application do it like it's the only one you're doing where you're telling these people i'm the one that should get this role i deserve to have this role when they see your cv and cover letter let them say oh wow this looks good too <laughs> this commute i'm committing it's not really making sense you're excited and you're like ah these people are giving me a lot no dear it's the bare minimum <laughs> you also want it to be heavy let it be mm. marketing isn't just social media you have brand development you have social media there you have email marketing i would rather even send my portfolio to a company than actually do a task because never again they wanted me to create a one month social media calendar no 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 no! don't do that don't do that so that's how a lot of these places get your intellectual property from you and they just use it for free you need to actually think smart sis bro you don't have a job bro. if i want to get out of here i need to do things to make myself uncomfortable so that I can eventually be comfortable. One thing for me is I would ask about the prospects of growth in the company. Let them know self that you self you can, you know, form small. I even shut down other applications to focus on this one. That was another mistake I made. I literally grew skin of a lizard. Oh yes. You know that kind of rejection you face at some point that you even think, is this the right career path for me? Just keep pushing keep pushing if it's three months do it it's important for that your cv the presentation i did for that job to an extent i got pretty confident and comfortable talking about my skills and experiences you wouldn't be stuck at any point forever as desperately as you need a job i would say it's best to apply when you're in the right frame of mind welcome to another video on my channel in today's video i'm going to be talking about my experience job hunting in london and i would kind of generalize to the uk because i guess the system might not be very different in each city so just to give you like an idea of things to do or look out for when you're job hunting i'm sharing this because i would want to make it easier for people that are currently job hunting because i understand how difficult and frustrating it might be when you're job hunting so there are just a few things that i noted when i was job hunting that I wouldn't do again and there are some things that I eventually started doing that I wish I started earlier so this video is basically just going to talk about everything that is relating to job hunting and if you have any other questions you'd want to ask feel free to drop it in the comment section or message me on my social media platforms you can even send an email I don't mind I would reply the first point I'm going to go into is the website you're using to search I would say use multiple websites. The websites that I used, I used Otter, I used Indeed, I used Total Jobs, I used Read, I also went on LinkedIn and I used Fashion Worky. There were so many websites. I feel like there are even some I haven't mentioned here and if I remember any, I'll put it on the screen. But I was using different platforms to check for jobs. You have to be on your Zoom because I always believe that when you're using multiple ways to search for something, you would definitely have more options and then you can now even decide okay this is what i want this is like you have the liberty to actually pick and choose which you'd want to apply to when you have like a variety right so that's something you should definitely do and when you're using websites use the appropriate filters take your time to filter out things you know if you're thinking about distance from your house to your office that's commit time that's something you want to take into consideration it's very important because sometimes you might go through the process of applying for a job you get the job and you actually realize after a while well that <laughs> this commute i'm commuting is not really making sense like you might be tired eventually you know when you're starting in the beginning it's all fun and games but like once your body is doing the same thing over and over again it's like where until you actually get physically and mentally tired i'll say it's very important to consider your commute time you know how far do you want your office to be from your home do you want something that is like a 30 minute commute or do you want one hour or even more than an hour so it depends and i would say one thing to consider with commute time is the type of role it is if it's somewhere where you have to go in four or five days a week i'll definitely recommend that your commute time is not too long so you're not too tired but if it's like two days going into the office or three you know you can you can bear with the distance i guess because you're not going in every single day so those are things that you have to think about what kind of role is it is it a hybrid role is it fully remote or is it full on site so hybrid is when you have some days at home some days in the office remote you're completely at home and then on site you're in the office five days a week another thing to factor is the type of role do you want something permanent or temporary so type of temporary roles are like fixed term contracts so it can either be three months six months nine months or it can be like 
for maternity cover so those are like temporary roles and then permanent once you get the job and you pass your probation you're there until you want to leave or they tell you to leave exactly you also need to consider if you want a full-time role or a part-time role full-time is typically 35 hours and above i would say even the above is like between 35 to 37 and a half and then part-time is anything from 25 below I guess if I'm not correct I would sure put it on the screen here so you can see what I'm talking about so yeah you need to decide do you want a full-time role or a part-time role so these are things you have to take into consideration also your salary what is your salary range one thing I'll say that you should do is do some research and see what the minimum salary is for your experience and for the role itself see what the market is saying like compare salaries and probably search like you know what's the average salary for whatever role it is that's something i wish i did because many a times you see that some companies actually put an amount that is lower than the average and because you haven't done your research you're excited and you're like ah these people are giving me a lot no dear is the bare minimum <laughs> look around and see the salary ranges for the role that's something that is very important to do that i didn't do that i'm telling you now that you should do <laughs> also when you use websites to search for jobs make sure you go to the company's website to check if the job is actually being advertised because sometimes some websites will have the role on their own platform whereas the company they probably filled up the role or they're not even advertising anything like the platform i have just put that out there that happens because Sometimes you check and then you see, oh, this particular company is advertising for like a marketing assistant. Then you go to the company's website and you see that there's no advertisement for anything. It was all a lie. <laughs> so make sure that you're applying through the company's website. I don't know how true this is, but I just feel like going straight to the company's website, the chances of you actually getting your CV and your cover letter through the door, I would say it's higher than just applying through platforms sometimes like third-party platform so if I'm wrong correct me please but like I just feel if you can see that the company website has the job role posted there just go through the company's website instead of using a third-party website I will talk about your CV and cover letter this is where you market yourself this is where you're selling yourself this is where you're telling these people I'm the one that should get this role I deserve to have this role make sure you are selling yourself because the same way when companies are advertising roles and they put all the perks, like the benefits of the role, and you see it and you're like, oh, wow, this looks good. When they see your CV and cover letter, let them say, oh, wow, this looks good too. Yeah, you know, put yourself out there. One thing I'll suggest is have people go through your cover letter and your CV. Let two, three pairs of eyes look at what you've actually written because sometimes you're only seeing it from your lens so you can't really criticize as somebody on the outside will see there's a way that you would write stuff and the person will see and be like okay rewrite this this doesn't really sound or write it this way it might sound better so that's something that is very important and for the contents of your cv i would say keep it brief but then impactful like you want a concise sentence for you know whatever role you're talking about or whatever activity you're talking about that you perform but you also want it to be heavy let it be mm. <laughs> You get my point like even if it's a two-line sentence when somebody reads that thing let them say oh wow this person is quite interesting we would want to call this person in for an interview that's how people would actually get the opportunity to be interviewed because they've written so well about themselves and they've made the hiring team like curious about who you are they want to get to know you they want to hear you talk about yourself and your achievements and also it's very important that your CV and cover letter they are loaded and for your CV, I had to include numerical data. So for example, I worked at a company, a fixed term contract. My role was a fixed term contract, right? And I was running some affiliate programs and the amount of people that I had in that program or the amount of people I was managing in that program were over 400. So in my CV, I'm going to talk about how I managed an affiliate program that had over 400 affiliates on the list. If someone sees that for marketing, they'll be like, oh, okay, we want to get to know more about, you know, what you did and how were you able to manage that. So those are things that would make people curious about what you've done. One thing I'll say is make sure to tailor your CV and your cover letter when you're doing any application because each company is different. I mean, there might be some generic ones, like there might be some that kind of like have the same description or requirements, maybe some social media roles you're applying to. They might have the same thing that they're looking for they want so you don't necessarily have to change your whole cv like you can just 
tweak some things add some things here and there or rewrite some things in a way that you know is relating to what they've stated as a requirement and then when you're writing your cover letter you now emphasize on things that you've done that are relevant to social media so someone like me now i have experience in social media and in marketing the way i would write my cover letter for a social media role what i would do is i would emphasize more on the actual content creation i would emphasize more on what i've done on those social media platforms and you know what results i got from strategies i implemented and then if i'm applying for a marketing role on the other hand i wouldn't emphasize so much on social media as i was for a social media role because marketing isn't just social media there are different components to marketing there's branding there there's email marketing you have social media marketing you have new product development so definitely the cover letter for a marketing role will be different because there are other aspects to you know what i would want to talk about but for social media it's just one section which is social media from like marketing that i would emphasize on to you shall get what i mean the point is for marketing you would have to write your cover letter in a way that you're highlighting different components of marketing you're talking about how you were part of you know product development how you were part of social media content creation how you're part of email marketing how you're part of branding but then for social media on the other hand you'll be talking about how you created content how you made the content calendar so definitely you talk about your social media skills in marketing but you wouldn't be emphasizing solely on that because there are other components in marketing but for social media you would emphasize on things that are social media related. This next step I'm going to talk about, it was my big sister Modu, who's a marketing specialist by the way. Yeah, so she taught me how to create a template when you're applying to jobs, just so that you can keep track of what you're doing. And when I tell you that thing was a blessing, it was actually like, that was one of the best things that happened because before I did that, it was so hard to keep up with where I had applied to, what role, like, it was just you, you can't really keep tabs if you're applying every other day right so having a spreadsheet was so helpful and it makes you organized you can actually think and you can breathe like you can even batch your applications like you can say okay today i'm going to do one to eight tomorrow i'm doing nine to ten or whatever do you understand like you can figure it out so what we did was we created a template on google google sheets so you can use excel or google sheets right so i use google sheets and i would also share like what the template looked like so we had the name of the role the name of the company we had the link that i got the job from so you know if it was from the company website or from linkedin or from Otter or from indeed we put the link there and i put the day that i applied to the job so i could keep track of everything then you can now do subsequent tabs on you know have you done your first stage or have you done your second stage so it just helps you stay organized so if i know that okay i'm applying for a social media role at a company called diamond limited i would write it there social media diamond limited i'll put the link and put applied then status i think i had something called status or so like you know what the response was did they ask for an interview or did they tell me no so those are things that i did to just help me stay on track make sure that you stay organized it will also help you stay calm within yourself like you can see progress you can see that okay you've applied to this this is the next stage you would even know when you have interviews if you probably get a call back on like a monday whatever you put the date there okay 15th of august i have a first interview if the first interview went well you know that okay you're going to put the data into your sheet you'd write okay second interview 23rd of august or whatever it is you're just keeping track so you know so you can also even prepare yourself for those interviews that are coming imagine you were not keeping track of what you were doing and you replied to a place saying oh yes i'm available to do an interview on the 10th of august by 2 p.m you've forgotten about that one should you really be forgetting if you're job hunting but it happens yeah like you can be stressed and you're just saying yes and you're excited so you might not really remember like that you had already booked an interview you now get another call that's telling you oh when can you schedule an interview and then you're telling them oh 10th of august at 3 p.m that is very unwise that is very unwise when you have a sheet you're able to schedule your interviews appropriately you're not mixing and matching and you can even keep track of okay it was this company that called me back it was that company that called me back the reason why i'm saying this right and don't judge me please don't okay don't i actually made a mistake one time whereby i didn't put in the data for a job that i had applied to and i 
got a call back and I was like, who are these ones? Like, what's this? <laughs> like, I was like, wait, did I even apply to this job? Because I forgot. Imagine having hundreds of applications you've done. Are you really going to be remembering that you applied for one job that is in central London? Or you might not remember because every day something is coming up. Trust me, you would even feel better when you're organized. You'd even be more productive because you are, you are not panicking. You're not in a state of tension. So it's definitely something that you should consider. If you're not doing it, it doesn't matter. You can start doing it if you've already applied to 50. No problem. If you have the time, you can put in the data to the sheet. If not, you just start when you're doing your next batch of applications. Another thing I would say when it comes to this spreadsheet and like applications, what my sister and I, what Mudo and I did, we designated a day where we would just search for jobs. Like we would just take our time and search thoroughly for jobs, right? And I'll probably take like a day or two off to just gather myself back. Then on the third day, I'll now apply in batches. That's something that could also be helpful. So instead of search, apply, search, apply, obviously you don't have to do this way, but I'm just suggesting, right? It would be easier if you kind of have a system, have a system that works for you. If you're the kind of person that you, as you're finding you need to apply, go for it, but just document it. But if you're somebody that you have to find them, you know, put it in the sheet and you know that, okay, yes, you found these ones. Then when you now feel like you want to apply to them, you go for it. And when it comes to applications, as desperately as you need a job, I would say it's best to apply when you're in the right frame of mind. When you can actually calm down and give it your all. It's better. That is even more productive. I'll say that's even more efficient when you're applying when you actually are in the mental state to do it or emotional state to do it. Imagine just applying and you didn't really... What's the point? There's no point. <laughs> like, imagine you're in high spirit, you feel good, you feel motivated, you're calm, you know, you're relaxed and you take your time and do an application. The chances that you'd actually get a call back, it increases, it's higher. Like, and Modu also says this thing, when you're doing an application, do it like it's the only one you're doing. Give it your all. Don't do that thing of, eh, okay, sure, I have 10 rows to apply to. I'll put energy into one or two, then the other. <laughs> what are you doing? No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. It's like, give it your all. If you're applying to 10, apply to those 10 with energy. If you're applying to two, give it the same energy. Like, don't because you never know imagine the one that you felt mm, i didn't really want to put so much effort it's like don't forget sis bro you don't have a job bro. you're trying to get one it's not like you already have a job and you want to maybe change your job then you can even be picking and choosing not this one i don't just give it your all do your best and leave the rest for god like once you know that you've given it your all just relax if it works out it works out if it doesn't onto the next day she you move so obviously you've applied to jobs and you know this is time that people are getting back to you people are trying to schedule interviews with you take your time to schedule an interview as much as you're actually looking for a job and you want to get the job as soon as possible make sure that you're scheduling your interviews appropriately schedule your interviews at times that you can be comfortable you can take your time like you don't feel like you need to rush or you don't feel like oh my god i don't have enough time it might be difficult, right? But you need to actually think smart. Like you need to be smart with your time slots and how you're doing it. So when I was working in retail and I was trying to get my first marketing job, I had to tell myself, okay, I'm working on Monday, Tuesday, I don't have work. I'll tell the hiring team, okay, I'm free on Tuesday. I'm available the whole day on Tuesday. Please, when can we schedule? If they say, oh, we can only schedule on a Monday, I would now think to myself, would I want to switch my shift with someone or would I just try and do it during my break? And you have to actually, like, there's so many things that I had to do. And I was like, when I thought about it, I was like, I actually tried. There was a time when I had to use my lunch break because the interview was for about 40 minutes. I think I had a sandwich and a drink and I went straight to find somewhere quiet and, you know, somewhere that I'll be calm. And I had my interview there and the person wouldn't have even known that I was probably at a mall because then I was working in retail the person wouldn't even have any idea that I was at a mall doing this interview because I had to actually think about it like if I want to get out of here I need to do things to make myself uncomfortable so that I can eventually be comfortable you wouldn't always get the time slot that you'd want right so you have to think of ways to make it work and I told myself if it means me not having my whole lunch break 
to just relax and maybe eat my food and whatever and i have to have an interview so be it and that's what i did a lot of times i would just quickly eat my food then go and find a quiet place in the mall imagine how hard it is finding a quiet place in the mall if you're not going probably towards a restroom area or going outside of the building even just to make sure that i can do my interview in a quiet and nice place so if you're someone that you're not even working in retail now maybe you're at home Pick a time of the day where you know you feel relaxed, you're not going to be stressed or pressured to have the interview. If you're like me that's worked in retail and you're still in retail and you're trying to, you know, get your first corporate job, think about it. Okay, where can I do interviews if I eventually get one? Don't wait until you actually have an interview. You have to think about it. Okay, if I was to get called for an interview now, where can I do it? How would I arrange my time? Would I get someone to cover my shifts for me? Or would I be able to quickly do it during my lunch break? You have to think of ways you can actually have the interview. That would even give you ginger. It would give you, you know, you feel more confident. You feel like, okay, if once the interview comes, I can actually kill it. Like, I can do it. So, just make sure that you're prepared. Make sure that... You're not waiting until the last minute before you start thinking, oh my goodness, where can I have an interview? Where should I schedule an interview? And make sure that when you have multiple interviews coming in, you're not overwhelming yourself. There's sometimes I might have two interviews in a day and I'll just think about it. Okay, if I do one in the morning, I can do one probably like in the afternoon after lunch time. So even if I knew I was still going to do two interviews, I wasn't under pressure because I knew I had enough time to prepare myself for the next interview. Like I wasn't under stress of okay this one has to finish quickly because i booked this one too close no so make sure you give yourself able time and then when you're going for an interview study about the company don't go in there and you know it seems like you've not done your research because if i'm being honest and i'm a hiring manager and somebody has come for an interview and i'm asking you questions about us or what you know about us and you can't even say anything I'm sorry, but I'm not going to really take you serious because you had enough time to research about us. You're basically saying you want to start working with us or you want to start working for us, however you would say. And then you don't even know what we do or they are, you can't even tell me, okay, why do you like the company? Or You need to be able to give them answers to certain questions. Like Imagine you're at an interview and they're asking you, oh, why would you want to work in this company? And you can't even, or even if you give an answer, it's not really relevant to what they actually do in the company. No, no, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. Because ideally, no company wants to hire somebody that hasn't shown interest in what they do. So make sure that you've done your background search about the company. Make sure that your experience actually matches what they do in the company. That would even make the process swift and, you know, easy. Because they can see that, okay, yes, your goals align. The company and yourself. You have similar values, similar goals. So ensure you do your research you study about the company you're confident when you're answering questions and even when they ask you oh do you have any questions yes ask them yes ask questions don't say no even if it's one question just ask like let them know that you're actually curious to know about this role one thing for me is i would ask about the prospects of growth in the company i would ask about what the day in the life is typically for somebody that is going to be working this role i always ask about how the team is like what are people like how is the culture in the company how is inclusion and diversity in the company? Like, ask them questions too. So it's not like they're just asking you, asking you, and it seems like, oh, you desperately need the... Even if you desperately need the job, let them know self that you self you can, you know, form small. So basically, just ask. Don't be too shy. Don't be scared. But if you want to even know other questions you can ask, you can literally Google, like, kind of questions I can ask an interviewer doing an interview or a hiring manager doing an interview. You can even make it specific to your role or specific to your sector so sweeties don't be scared to ask questions because if you don't ask you never know now i don't know how general this is for different career paths right but for myself i'll talk about marketing and social media sometimes you'd apply to jobs that would ask you to do a task right you see that task thing is very tricky i understand that when it comes to social media and content creation you want to actually see what this person has done. I would rather even send my portfolio to a company than actually do a task because never again. It is the absolute trenches. Would you believe that there was a company I applied to, went for the first interview, it was fantastic. You know, during my interview, she even called other people on the team to hear what I was talking about, things that they could do for their social media. She was writing it down. So I was really happy about it. I got called back for the second um, interview which was a task-based interview and these people asked me to create a storyboard for a campaign 
between a venue and a jean brand they asked me to write down an event plan for a special date so like mother's day or christmas or halloween they also asked me to go to one of their locations to go and film an entertainment night and edit it and whatever i did those three things fantastic took my time like i even shut down other applications to focus on this one that was another mistake i made that i wish i didn't i wish i still continued like i wish i didn't drop my momentum would you guys believe that they never even go back to me i feel like to be decent to be like okay da, 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 you didn't make it fine but like you made me do all these things you didn't even get back to me for all i know you've used some of my ideas definitely because imagine we're like 20 people that have applied to a place you have 20 different things to think about and you can pick and choose and you, you get like we've given you intellectual property and just like that so that's why i say it's very tricky another place i applied to first interview fantastic they literally even sent me an email the next day after my interview because they were like oh they typically get back in two weeks so in my head i was like okay i have a two-week window they got back the next day and please guess what this task was they wanted me to create a one month social media calendar that's what some people are doing as their actual job. You people want me to do it for you as a task. And they were like, they were even specific. They were like, um, they wanted 12 to 16 real ideas for the month. They wanted me to think about um, photo shoots and write down props that we would need and how I would direct, you know, the photo shoot. And they also wanted me to put captions for the pictures and the videos that will be going on the content calendar. They wanted me to add hashtags. <sighs> I guess my name is Bubu the Fool now because, okay, to be fair, I understand it's a social media role, but guys, let's be realistic. It's different if you told me, oh, a two week calendar, a, like maybe a week or two weeks, you wanted me to like, do a plan for that, but you asking for a month, to me, that's just crazy because, like I said for the previous one, if 20, 20 is even too far for this one, if five of us do that, you have a five month plan for your social media. You will definitely use it. Please don't even tell me. No, if they tell me they oh, they won't use it, that's a lie. They will definitely use it. There's nothing anyone will say. So that's how a lot of these places get your intellectual property from you, and they just use it for free. So with these few points of mind, I hope I've been able to convince you and not confuse you that when it comes to tasks, pick and choose wisely. There's some that will start the process. Maybe I put in my CV, you know, at the place where they ask you to upload your CV, and then I'm answering questions and i get to a point they will now tell me to list a campaign and do it i'm not doing that i'm so sorry like no if you ask for a portfolio that's fair enough if you ask me oh what do i think about this or oh, what's my favorite campaign and why that's different but you telling me oh maybe i've applied to do content writing you're now telling me to write six different things like I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I just feel like sometimes they're excessive with their tasks that they ask people to do. It's fine to want to see what someone can do and see how well they do it, but you taking advantage of that, that's daylight robbery. Unfortunately, this last point I'm going to talk about is not a last one, best one situation because I'm talking about rejection. Guys, if you know the kind of thick skin I grew, I literally grew skin of a lizard oh yes like at some point i felt like i was a reptile i'm not even joking guys the amount of rejection that i faced you know that kind of rejection you face at some point that you even think is this the right career path for me like what am i doing here is this the actual like this job do i really think this role fits me like i started to think i was like what am i really doing here you know am i meant to be here or there like should i just take a bow and exit Oh my goodness, I applied to over 300 places within the space of, I would say, five to six months. I did like a total of 40 interviews. There were so many no's I got that at some point when an email comes in, I just already thought, okay, I'm going to go and read, unfortunately, due to, or unfortunately, after much consideration, oh, at a point I was like, yo, what's happening? But you know one thing I'll say? I know this sounds crazy again. Uh, she's just saying it because she's working now. Don't stop, please. Don't let your momentum drop. No, keep like it's difficult, I know. Like saying this is then if somebody had even told me I would even feel like punching you. But just keep pushing. Keep pushing. I'm telling you that breakthrough will come. Keep pushing. 
guys the amount of unfortunately i got like two weeks prior to getting this job and another offer that i had i gave up at some point i was like i'm done i just was fed up like back to back no 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 then some of them that you might have done the first interview second interview they now never get back to you so it's just like the uncertainty you're just in the space it's a situation of you don't know did i get the job did i not get the job that feeling of uncertainty is sickening like it can literally make you feel sick in your stomach like your, your tummy would actually hurt you that's how i felt at some point like i just gave up then modu and i decided to go on a break we took a break from applications or whatever and she was ah when i say support system hmm she will send me nothing less than 10 to 15 links every other day i'm not even joking guys like she took that load off me of having to search for and apply so it was just like she was just bringing and i was just applying there were even so many times that we went to cafes or somewhere to go and do the task because you know we had to do it together and we're trying to get the best like the first marketing job i got was actually a fixed term contract guys don't shy away from fixed term contract even if it's three months do it it's important for that your cv that you're still building at the end of the day that fixed term contract that i did it got me to where i am today the presentation i did for that job after that presentation the person that became my manager eventually asked the other person oh do you have any questions the first thing she said was no that that was one of the most detailed presentations she has ever seen i was speechless i even had to ask i said no questions at all they both said no that i couldn't have explained my presentation any better than that can you imagine that's why i said just give everything your all and fun fact <laughs> And that was actually the job that I said I didn't know I had applied to and when they got back to me I was like mm -mm, did I even apply to this place that was the job <laughs> so you can imagine so just give it your all and it was like a six to seven style presentation I made sure that I used their brand colors I made sure that I used pictures from their website I made sure that I was using keywords that they had also used on their website so you have to be intentional you have to be intentional you want to go into marketing i'm just using my career as an example you want to go into marketing these are things that marketers actually look forward to like these are things you're actually going to do in the job so if they can see that you're able to take initiative and you know do things that are on brand when you're not even in the brand think about when you're now in the brand it's gonna be spicy <laughs> but yeah be positive stay po no matter what just stay positive even if you're seeing an unfortunately email think of it as a time will come where i'll see this email and i'll laugh and i'm like mm, remember that time these people said that's how it is in the moment that's not how it is i'm not even going to lie to you because there's so many times i was on the shop floor when i was working in retail and i'll just see an email notification and i'm seen unfortunately already on the banner i feel like busting into tears on that shop floor like everything is just making me angry now imagine a customer that is just stressing you you can in your head you're like please 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 i have more problems than this i beg so those are basically the tips and tricks i'll say helped me when i was job hunting that was basically how my experience was and i just thought to share just to make the process easier for anyone out there that's you know needed guidelines on what to do when job hunting and things to look out for and things to be mindful of so yeah, if there's any other points you feel I missed out on, please feel free to drop it in the comment section so if people are watching, they can go through it and learn because you never really know who might need some help. And don't be scared to ask for help. Like if you are able to reach out to friends and say, oh, please, can you help me proofread this? Or please, can you help me prep for an interview? Don't be scared to do that. And the funny thing is eventually you'd get used to talking about yourself okay it depends on how many interviews you do i did about 40 interviews so to an extent i got pretty confident and comfortable talking about my skills and experiences like it's it will only get better just see it that way no matter what the situation is just remember that it would only get better you wouldn't be stuck at any point forever it only get better it's hard to visualize when you're in a situation you don't want to be in but just be positive and just keep going, just keep pushing yourself. Some days you need to take a break, take the break so that you're not burnt out. The days that you feel like, you know, you can do this, you go for it, you go back into it. So that's basically what I wanted to talk about. I hope I've inspired some people. I hope that with these points, there'll be a positive development with your current job hunting or when you eventually start to job hunt. I hope that these steps or these points would 
be beneficial and i will push you into the right direction when you're job hunting and don't forget like i said if you have any questions or you want to talk about anything feel free to drop me a message drop me a comment or drop me an email and i'll be sure to reply you and i hope you guys enjoyed this video or you found it insightful or you know people that would find it insightful if you do please don't forget to share the video to them and if you enjoyed it don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and you'll see me in my next video also tell me if you want to know any other thing about job hunting or my experience or even job hunting tailored to marketing and social media i'll be sure to film a video about it bye sweeties